We've got a couple inches of snow on the ground and it's barely above freezing, but my German Shepherd just started shedding her winter coat. So I know that spring is just around the corner, which means it's time to start thinking about the garden for this year. Got a $100 gift card for Christmas, so I wanted to use it to see just how much food $100 could grow in a garden. quick search in Google, the best size garden for one person to grow enough food to be sustainable is approximately 10 by 10. There are two adults living in my household, so I chose a 20 by 20 plot of land to start my $100 garden in. So this is just a bare plot of earth that hasn't been used for anything else. It is on the border of my existing garden that I built last year, so the back end of this garden does already have a little bit of fencing on it. In one corner is my brand new compost pile. So the main idea of this challenge is to take a 20 by 20 piece of land that doesn't have any existing infrastructure or minimal infrastructure like mine does and only investing a hundred dollars see just how much food you can grow throughout the year. So that hundred dollars will be used to buy seeds, any seedlings that we want, any of the gardening supplies that we need and any infrastructure that we're going to need for the garden. So creativity is definitely going to be a must here. I am going to allow as part of my rules for my challenge, I'm going to be using any found or free materials that I find. That is one of the key pieces of homesteading on a budget here in Dragonway Farm is we like to repurpose materials that we find. So I have pallet fences. I also have woods out here full of trees that I plan on using for various different things. So we're gonna try to be really creative to try to keep costs down here and see just how much food we can possibly grow. The idea behind this garden is to only invest $100, but that doesn't mean that we can't reinvest any money that we might make off of our $100 garden. So I do plan to plant extra seedlings and hopefully sell them or any produce that I might happen to make money off of in this space I'm going to be reinvesting back into the garden to make improvements and things like that. I would love it if you would join me in the $100 Garden Challenge and start your own garden challenge this year. I think this is going to be great if this is your very first time starting a garden. We're going to go over a lot of the things that you need to know to start a garden from scratch. So you might pick up some good tips. We will have tasks to complete every single week. So if you would like to follow along, definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And for a deeper experience on our website, we have a forum page where we have set up the $100 Garden Challenge Forum so that you can connect to the community and share your own journey, share videos and photos about the garden. We can chat about any issues or inspiration ideas. I just think it would be a really fun way to, or to build a community around this little project. So I would love it if you would join me there. All right, the first and probably most important task when deciding to start a garden is to figure out where exactly you want your garden to be on your property. Some of the things that you're gonna wanna think about when choosing a spot for your garden is is a what size do you want it to be like I stated before this one is approximately 20 by 20 20 foot by 20 foot which should have the potential to feed two adult people throughout the year we'll see the second important thing that you want to consider is how easy is it going to be to work on this piece of property the piece that I have chosen is actually very close to my house so I don't have to walk very far to come out here to work on the garden. It's also very close to a source of water, so I'm not gonna have to haul miles and miles of hose or drip lines or things like that. It's going to be very convenient for me to water this garden in the summer. Another thing that you wanna think about is where in relation to trees and other structures does your garden fall? Ideally, if you're growing a lot of vegetables, you want land that's going to get a minimum of six to eight hours of full sun per day. So you wanna make sure that it's not going to be shaded by buildings or trees, things like that. So it's a good idea to go on your property and get the orientation. I know for me, north is by the road, south is 
a tr or the woods. I have west over here towards the swamp and my east is over towards my big field. So I know what the orientation is. Anything on the east side is going to get the morning sun, which is going to be great to, uh, to evaporate the dew. And if you plant anything tall that might cast a shadow, you're going to want to try to make sure that it's on your north side so that as the sun comes around, the shadow isn't going to be cast directly over your garden. So if you have any large structures on your south side or your west side, just know that part of your garden is going to be shaded as the afternoon goes on. So something to be aware of. I want you to figure out what size you want of your garden and find an ideal location that you know the orientation of where it's going to get the most amount of sun. The next thing we want to do for this week is to figure out what our USDA grow zone is. Now this is important because it's going to let us know what our first predicted frost date is for the spring and what our last predicted frost date is for the fall. So this is really important for letting us know the optimal time to start seeds. Find your garden zone, simply go into your preferred internet search engine and type in, what's my garden zone? It'll bring up the USDA plant hardiness zone map. And it'll prompt you to enter your zip code in order to find out what, what your zone is. So I'm gonna enter mine. And it shows me that my hardiness zone is 7A. When is my first frost date zone 7A? You can see here, you have 7A and 7B. My first frost date in the fall is going to be October 15th to October 31st. And I'm looking at my last frost date being between April 1st and April 15th. Now that you know what your USDA hardiness zone is, I want you to grab a notebook that you can dedicate as a garden journal. Many experienced and successful gardeners will keep a journal from year to year to track their progress and to write down things that work and things that don't work. It's a great way to grow as a gardener and documenting things on your homestead will only help you in the long run. So you might as well establish the habit now. Once you have your journal, you're going to want to get a calendar out, write down when your last expected frost date is in the spring. And then you're going to want to count back eight weeks, six weeks and four weeks from when your frost date is. And this is going to let us know when to plant things. Uh, next week, we're going to start choosing varieties. So now that you do know your grow zone, you can go through some catalogs and start thinking about some of the items that you may want to grow. Any items that you routinely buy at the store are probably a safe bet of things that you're going to want to grow. So those are the main tasks that we're going to be completing for week number one. You want to choose your space. You want to figure out what your grow zone is and you want to document when your last expected frost date is and when your first expected frost date is in the fall. Next week we're going to pick some varieties to grow for our garden. We're going to focus on having a three season garden. So we're going to try to plant um, a spring garden, a summer garden, and a fall garden. So start thinking about what you might want to grow and I'll see you next week.